So we actually saw what a minor was, and that was the, the, the minor is the entry that's found by crossing off the I row and the J column, whatever's left. You find the determinant of that, and that's called the minor. So if we were asked to find the matrix of minors, we're looking for the matrix M11, M12, M13, and so on. So these minors, without that sign, so the minus 1 to the I plus J, that was to find the cofactor, not the minor. The minor itself is just those determinants. Okay, so we need to find nine little determinants for a 3 by 3. And I actually wouldn't ask you to do it for a 4 by 4 because you'd have to find 16 3 by 3 determinants to do the mi ma matrix of minors, right? You have to do nine little two by twos, which are not too bad, but like a four by four, you'd have to do 16 different determinants of three by threes to do that. So you would never be asked that, okay? So three by three is what we'll do this for. Yeah. So if you were asked, and I'm gonna show you how to find the inverse using this matrix of minors, to do an inverse of a 4 by 4, you just have to row reduce because this method would actually be longer, but it's kind of shorter for a 3 by 3. Okay, so let's do it. I would just probably list all of these, 1, 1, 1, 2, and so on. So each of these is found by crossing off. So you have to pay, pay close attention because if I put lines on these, you're not going to see what happens. <laughs> But maybe you already know from what we already did. So if we're looking for the 1, 1, you cross off the first and you write those numbers. 1, 4, negative 1, negative 3. All right. And then that determinant is the first entry. So that would go here, 1. And we do that 9 times. So for 1, 2, so if we cross off that, and I don't usually put lines on it because then you mess up your matrix. So 3, 4, 0, negative 3. So 1, 3 is here. So 3, 1, 0, negative 1. And we'll do this. So uh, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1, 3, 2, and 3, 3. Okay, so for 2, 1, that's this 3, so we cross off that and that. We have 2, 0, negative 1, 3. What? Negative 3. Two, 2, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 3. Two, 3, minus 1, 2, 0, negative 1. Three one, it's here. So two zero one four. Three two is here. One zero three four. And three three is here. Negative one two three one. So you make up your matrix, making sure you put them in the right order. 1, negative 9, negative 3, you'll know if you made a mistake later because there's a way to check your answer because it's going to find our inverse. 
So there'll be a way to check your answer. Okay, does anyone not see where I was getting those little determinants? Okay, so that's the matrix of minors. Okay, each of the numbers is called a minor, so you don't call it, this matrix isn't called the minor, but it's the matrix of the minors, right? Okay, so that's one matrix. Then we're going to do the matrix of the cofactors. So what's different about that? We saw the cofactors, so they had the minor, and then we multiplied by a sign, either plus or minus. So that's, you take this minor, and we're going to find the matrix of cofactors from that using either plus or minus. So the cofactor matrix. this one's called C, is the matrix of minors with a sign change. So with sign changes according to the rule minus 1 to the i plus j. So depending on the spot, it's either plus or minus. So what I usually do is, yeah, it is easy to memorize because 1 plus 1 is what? 2. So this one's going to be plus. This one's going to be minus plus. And then the opposite here. Right. And even with a 4 by 4 or anything, you can quickly know whether it's supposed to be plus or minus. So. I don't actually use the minus one to the, I just look at what spot it's in. So what this mean is if we apply this sign changes to the minor, our cofactor, so let's look at our minor was, <coughs> does anyone make sign mistakes in math a lot? Yeah, so <laughs> me too. So here's our minor from our other page. What I do is I write the cofactor matrix, just write the ones that stay the same first. So I find it gives you less mistakes. So the ones that stay the same are those plus. So the 1, the negative 3, the middle one, 3, the 8, and the negative 7. So those all stay the same. So I just write those first and then I carefully change the sign of the other ones. I find that works so much better than trying to say, okay, don't change the sign, change the sign. Don't change the sign, change the sign. Don't, right? You get very confused, and especially when one's a negative, and you have to change the sign to a positive, so on. So now change the sign. So that's a minus 9. It's going to be a plus 9, 6, minus 1, 4. So those ones we change the sign. Right? So that's the cofactor matrix. So you find the minor matrix, and then you find the cofactor matrix. Next, the cofactor transposed. This one's easy, because we just transpose it. So 1, 9, minus 3, 6, 3, minus 1, 8, 4, minus 7. So far, so good? OK, next find A times C transpose or C transpose times A. They're going to be the same. C transpose is not the inverse, though. Usually when we multiply two matrices and they give the same answer, it's the inverse. A times A inverse. And what does that give us when we multiply the inverse? The identity. Okay, so let's see what we get. So A I don't have on this page anymore. There's A. C transpose. We multiply. It's 
So this is on the uh, homework questions. So I'll post them tomorrow. I just used my calculator because the numbers were kind of big in these. So remember when you multiply row by column. Okay, and you'll know if the answer's right as you do this. So when we do our first one, minus one plus eighteen plus zero. So that one's easy. Okay, and then I'm going to my next. So minus one times six, so minus six, two times three plus six and zero. Zero. Okay. Now assuming I have everything right. This is, I'm going to fill the rest in, but you would obviously try each one because if you made one mistake in one minor early on, then you would find your mistake, right? Uh, do I have the answer here worked out? I don't. Oh, so I'm going to just keep multiplying to be sure because I don't have the answer right with me. Minus 8. That's zero. Next row, three plus nine minus twelve. Zero. And then eighteen plus three minus four. Seventeen. See the pattern? Um, twenty-four plus four minus twenty-eight. And then zero, three plus three, zero, and minus four plus twenty-one. All right, so it's not the inverse, but it's close. What's it off by? Seventeen, which is the determinant. So the determinant of A is seventeen. Okay. If when you do the cofactor transpose times A and you don't get the same number, you made a mistake. This is how it always ends up. What if the determinant were zero? What what answer would you get? All zeros. And that would just say the determinant is zero, which means it doesn't have an inverse. So if we have A times C transpose is equal to 1 over the determinant of A times I. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry. That doesn't make sense. I'm getting ahead of myself. Determinant of A times I. All right, so we had A, C transpose is equal to 17I. Do you agree? That's 17 times I. Right? So if we divide both sides by 17, we would have 1 over 17 A, C transpose is equal to I. So remember, a, a constant can move around anywhere. So A times 1 over 17 C transpose is equal to I. So this is A inverse. So A inverse is 1 over the determinant of A times C transpose. C transpose is called the adjunct. Just another word for you to remember. So sometimes they'll say find the adjunct of A. So they're looking for C transpose. Okay, so it is just it's another way to say that. It's not the inverse. The inverse needs the one over the determinant times that. So A inverse is equal to 1 over 17 times C transpose, which we have is 
you could multiply this 1 over 17 in or leave it out. If you're row reducing, you would have that 17 in when you row reduce to find the inverse. These will never have, well, unless there's fractions in the original A, we'll never have fractions because you're just doing, doing determinants and there's no fractions in it to start. There's never a time where you divide. So that eliminates that part. It also, if you don't mind finding the minor, so it's quicker to do this than, than row reducing. Only in the fact that usually we make a mistake row reducing and then you have to start over again and over again. Right? Did anyone make mistakes in their row reducing? Yeah, I would say it does happen. If you think you're doing, doing some simple math and you make a small mistake. Okay. So, with in five minutes or less, using the adjunct method, okay? We we're using the mi minors or whatever. So, can we do this quicker without being really long? It depends. If you can cross those off and do those little, um, little um, determinants in your head, then absolutely you can do it quick, right? So, we need M11. So, we need all the Ms. So, if we did these really quick, Zero. One, two. Minus a minus two. Be careful with that. Three is here, cross, cross, one, zero, one, one. copying those, you can copy them and try it on your own. If you did it yourself without trying to copy, you should end up with what I have. Maybe. If someone found a mistake, tell me. <coughs> so then how do we find C from that? Just change the signs. So which ones do we keep the same? You could write it out here. This goes plus, minus, plus. So keep it these the same. And like I said, I just write them all in the same and then change the signs of the other ones. And then we need C transpose. So pretty quick. 
then A times C transpose or C transpose times A, either way. So I'm just writing A and then C transpose. And when you multiply that, we won't go through the steps of the multiplication, but you get this. Nines down the diagonal, zeros everywhere else, which would mean you didn't make a mistake because the numbers on the main diagonal are the same, zeros everywhere else. So you would say A inverse is 1 over negative 9 times C transpose. and the determinant of A and the inverse. So doing it quick, you probably didn't follow along, you might have tried, but doing it quick, I did that in exactly five minutes, a real reduction if you made a mistake can take much, much longer. So I think that method's easier. But like I said, a four by four, you can't do it this way. So you have to do a real reduction to get a four by four. So what we'll do next class is 3.2, which is still on determinants, and it's all properties of determinants. So we'll do that next class, but tomorrow I'll post the lectures for today, the homework of section 3.1. So I'll post all that in the morning.